Photography is basically the process of capturing a moment in time, and capturing an athlete in mid-stride is the process of capturing an even smaller moment in time. But too often, stop-action photos don't look like they've stopped anything at all. So can anyone take sharp stop-action photos? It's easy when you take the time to learn some very basic photography skills. Today we'll teach you how to capture that very small moment in time. We'll even show you how to make your photos look like they're moving through time. Stop time with stop action photography, next on The Whole Picture. Welcome to The Whole Picture, I'm Erin Manning. You know, I can't tell you how many times people have asked me, is it even possible to take a good stop action photograph and make it look just like the ones in the sports magazines? And my answer would be yes. Depending on your camera, you may not be able to get as close to the action as the pros do, but the same basic rules of stopping the action still apply. Now you may want to stop the action, or you may want to blur the action, and that all depends on your shutter speed. Now the shutter is a mechanism in the camera that controls how long the light passes through the lens before it hits the film or the image sensor. Let me illustrate that first by showing you a picture. This is a stop action picture I took on the beach the other day, and you can see where his legs are really just stopped in midair. There's not much blur going on here. Let me give you a visual of that using a camera. I'm gonna use this old film camera here and take off the lens and also open up the back so you can see the shutter actually work. And I'm gonna pick a really fast shutter speed to start with. Right here, I'm gonna pick one one thousandth of a second, okay? And watch how fast the shutter opens and closes. See that? So if something's passing by the lens, it's gonna capture it right in midair and stop that action. All right, let me show you a slow shutter speed. And I'll do that by turning the shutter speed to something slow, really slow, like one eighth of a second. Now watch how long the shutter is open. Okay, that takes a long time. There's a lot of light passing through that lens, okay? So if something's moving past the camera, the motion's going to be blurred, just like in this photograph I took on the beach. And see how everything's blurred? Now with digital cameras, you're not using a mechanical shutter or film. You're working with an image sensor and that's an electronic device that turns off or on and controls the amount of light passing through the lens. Now, with stop action photography, the techniques you learn are not just for sports photography. You could actually capture the action of a wedding bouquet flying through the air or capture the blurred action of car lights moving down the street at night. Hi, Wendy, how you doing? Fine, Erin, how are you? Good. This is Wendy Warren, one of my students, and as you can tell, Wendy is pretty athletic, and she likes to take pictures of her friends down at the running track. So, Wendy, you said you were having some problems? Yes. Let's take a look at your photograph. Tell me about this. It is out of frame and blurry. Yeah, he is kind of running out of the frame. We can see his feet, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is okay, but we'd like to see more of him. And it is pretty blurry, so I'm guessing your, your shutter speed just wasn't fast enough. Must not be. Okay, let me show you one I took. And this is on the beach. This is a friend of mine running through the surf and I used a fast shutter speed to capture the action. And I also made sure that I followed him so I was able to keep him in frame. Now don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to learn <laughs> all kinds of techniques today so you can take great stop action photographs too. First I'll show you how to follow the action just like I did with this and that way you can keep your subject in frame. Then I'll show you how to use a fast shutter speed and that's going to capture the action, freeze the motion. Okay. Okay. Then I'll show you how to use a slow shutter speed and that way you can blur motion and create the illusion of movement. Which okay. is nice, you know, if you want to create that artistic effect. Then we'll come back here to the studio, we'll download all the pictures to the computer, and I'll show you how to create even more motion blur using a really cool effect with this image editing software we have. Okay. Sound good? Sounds great. Okay. Now I hear your friend's waiting for us down at the track. Yes, she is. Christina is waiting for us. Okay. Well, let's hurry up and go because I know it's hot out there. Yes, it is. Grab your camera. Every athlete will tell you that becoming the best always requires practice. Taking great photos is no different. Up next, I'll show you everything you need to make sure you get out of the starting blocks on time. And you'll see how to make your shutter speed a priority.
Welcome back to The Whole Picture. Wendy Warren is an avid runner and takes lots of pictures of her friends competing. But so far, none of her action photos are winning any medals. To help make Wendy's stop action photos real winners, we've gone out to a local track to learn how to properly capture the action. I think we'll be drinking some water. Yes. That's okay because I think this is a perfect place to take stop action photos. Yeah. We'll get some good, good shots. Good. Erin, this is my friend Christina. Hi. Hey, Christina, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. You know, it's really great you invited Christina here to help because the first thing you want to do when you take stop action photos is practice. So if you've got a really patient friend here who will run back and forth a few times, mm -hmm. you can practice at your own pace. Okay, good. Now remember that photograph you showed me back at the studio where your subject was sort of passing out of frame? Yes, I do. Well, that's because you need to practice following the action. Okay. So that way when the real event happens, you'll be ready to capture it. Okay. You want to get a sense of the speed of your subject passing through the frame. Uh -huh. And then you also want to get a sense of the timing of when to exactly hit that shutter button. I think I've been doing that a little late. <laughs> it happens a lot though. Mm -hmm. Now Christina, if you could just run down there and pass back and forth a couple times okay. till we say stop. Okay. We'll get some pictures. Okay, let's practice taking some shots. I'll show okay. you how it's done. Okay. Let's we'll get the camera ready, turn it on. Okay, Christina, let's take a run through. I just watch how I follow her with my camera. Just like that, let's take a look. See what I did? Yes. Okay, you can do this too. Are you sure? Let's give it a try. Okay. To take professional looking stop action photographs, you need to follow the action so that your subject stays towards the back edge of your frame. In this case, on the left side of the frame, one of the problems with digital cameras is that once you push the shutter button, it takes time for the camera to focus and then capture the picture. If you don't follow the action, your subject could be well outside the frame by the time the image is stored. So practice following the action until you have a good feel for how fast your subject is moving. Remember, you need to continue following the action even after you've hit the shutter button. Snap off a few pictures so that you'll learn how long it takes your camera to actually capture the image once you've pressed that shutter button. One way to help speed up your camera's capture time is to pre-focus. Pre-focusing will ensure that your camera's focus and exposure settings are close to being correct before your subject comes along. Point the camera in the area where your subject will pass through. Then press the shutter button down halfway so that your lens will focus on an object in the vicinity of where your subject will be. Practice by taking a few more pictures with pre-focus and without. Okay, do you see why it's important to have a sense of timing when taking stop action pictures? Yeah, it makes sense. It does. Well, the next thing you want to learn is how your camera works in relation to motion. Okay. So to really freeze something in motion, you want to make sure that your shutter speed is set to about 250th of a second or faster. Okay. And what that means is the camera's only going to let in that much light for that fraction of a second to hit your camera's sensor to capture that action. Okay. So if it's any if the shutter speed's any less than that, then the picture's probably going to be blurry. And to get good pictures, your camera's going to work the shutter speed and the aperture, which is the lens opening, together to get the best exposure. Okay. And typically in most cameras, when you have a faster shutter speed, it's going to adjust and open up the lens even more to let in more light. But that shortens your depth of field, so that means you have a lesser area that's actually in focus. Okay, well how do I know where the shutter speed is? Well, that's a good question. You just press the shutter halfway down, and right back here on the LCD screen, you can see the shutter speed and the aperture. Okay. Which you can also see in the viewfinder. Okay. okay, so as a beginner, it's a really good idea to practice taking your stop action photos outside like this, where we've got great light. Yeah. And that way, you don't need to worry about the size of the lens opening, so it won't be an issue. Many cameras have preset functions or modes built in. They help you take better pictures in certain situations. The camera's manufacturer programs the camera with what it thinks are the best settings for that shooting situation. For example, sports, portrait, and landscape modes. By setting the camera to sports mode, typically indicated with a runner icon, the camera chooses the settings most suitable for shooting sporting events. The camera will adjust the shutter speed and the lens opening to what it thinks is best, emphasizing a faster shutter speed. However, depending on the lighting and the speed of your action, you may want to take more control of your stop action photographs. Many professionals will use the shutter priority mode on their cameras 
which allows you to lock in the shutter speed you want. For more information on taking stop action photographs, log on to our website at DIYNetwork.com. Wendy's definitely sharpened her ability to take great stop action photos. When we come back, I'll teach her how to make it look like Christina is running at the speed of light. Welcome back to the whole picture. Anyone can capture beautiful, professional looking stop action photographs. It's all a matter of timing. Take the time to practice before the big event so that you're confident you have a feel for the timing of the action and know how long it takes your camera to actually capture the picture. But what happens if you want to take a little extra time to add motion to your stop action photos? I'm Erin Manning and I'm teaching Wendy Warren how to take stop action photographs. In this case of her friend, Christina. So, what, all, what do you think of the pictures? I think they look great. I do too. You're a very good teacher. Well, thank you. <laughs> yes. Well, now it's time to move on to a little bit more advanced technique. I'm going to show you how to take action photographs, but keep the subject in sharp focus and blur out the background. And that's going to create streaks, which will really give your pictures a sensation of movement. I've always wanted to try that. Well, that's good. Yeah. And the good news is you've already learned everything you need to know to shoot pictures where you intentionally leave the motion in the background. Good. All you need to do is change the shutter speed. So we'll just switch it to shutter priority and experiment, right. take a lot of photographs, and see just how blurry we want that background to be. Okay. Alrighty, so Christina, if you don't mind running back and forth a few times, okay. we'll start experimenting. To add motion to your stop action photos, you don't have to learn any new techniques. You'll use the ones you've already learned today, just a little differently. And remember, the cost to take digital photos is almost nothing, so experiment until you get what you want. Set your camera to shutter priority mode. Then change the shutter speed to below 250th of a second. Follow your subject and snap the picture. Be sure to allow enough time for your camera to capture the picture. It's crucial that you continue following your subject until you're sure the camera has opened and closed the shutter. Review the pictures and then adjust the shutter to an even slower speed. The slower shutter speed is what allows the background to blur as you're moving the camera. Your goal is to find the balance between the clarity of your subject and the blur of the background. As with any special effect photograph, this is entirely up to the photographer. Okay, I think these look pretty good. Yeah. But uh, I am sweating up a storm. I am too. It's too hot out here, so let's, let's go back to the studio. Okay. But here's another tip before we go. This is what a lot of professional photographers use, and it's called continuous mode. Here's the button right here. Just press that, mm -hmm. and then when you take your photographs, hold your hand down on the shutter button like this and keep pressing. It'll keep taking pictures for you until you let go. Okay, It's great. a great little tip. I'll try that. Christina, thanks so much for coming down today and running back and forth and sweating up a storm. You did a great job. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's head back to the studio. Okay. Was Wendy able to capture the stop action photos that will make her friends celebrate? Find out as we review the day's results next. It's just a matter of time to capture beautiful stop action photos. Timing is everything. You need to get the timing of the action down when following your subject. Make sure your shutter is set to 250th of a second or faster. Then frame the subject so that you leave enough time for the camera to focus and capture the image. Once you have these very basic skills down, you then have the ability to make your photos look like you've manipulated time. Well, that was fun. Yes. Well, it feels a lot cooler in here, though, doesn't it? Much cooler. <laughs> Well, I went ahead and downloaded all the pictures to the computer, so let's go ahead and click through and see which one you like. I think you did okay. a good job. That's nice. I like the composition on that one. Let's go with that one. Okay. I like that one. Okay, I'm going to show you a really cool effect to do with this. Remember how we were playing with shutter speed, with stop action, and also blur? Yes. Well, this looks pretty stop action, but we can go ahead and blur out the background even more and really? do something fun. So let's try it this way first. Now, we're working with a graphics tablet here, mm -hmm. and you've got the mouse. But let's get rid of the mouse, and I'll show you something else. And this is our pen right here. Go ahead and pick that up. Now, this is just like using a pencil on paper, except you're drawing on the screen. 
a lot more fun. Yeah, I've okay. always wanted to draw on the screen. <laughs> All right, now we're using an image editing program here that you could use in on any different computer, and a lot of other image editing programs are pretty much the same with their functions. So let me just explain, too, with most of these image editing programs is they work on layers. So if you look mm -hmm. over here to the right, we have one layer right now. We're going to work on a second layer, a copy layer. So let's make that duplicate layer by coming up here to the menu bar, layer, duplicate layer, okay? And right now it's called background copy. Let's click OK and just okay. leave it at that. Okay, now you see you have two layers over here, right? Yeah. The one that's highlighted is the one we'll be working on. Let's go ahead and blur this right okay. now, and I'll show you how to do it. Come up here to the menu bar and go to filter, roll down to blur, mm -hmm. down to motion blur. Now we have a little dialog box that says motion blur, and it gives us um, distance and pixels down here. Right now it's at 34, and that means it's blurring it out about 34 pixels. You can kind of play around with a slider down here and experiment and see what it would look like if you put it all the way up to say 100 or something, how uh -huh. blurred it would get. And there you go. And if your preview box is checked, you can see what it would look like. Now that's super blurry, right? That is a little much. Okay, let's just try it somewhere between 30 and 40 pixels and go for that effect. Is that okay. good? Yeah, that looks good. Let's okay. click OK. Good. Okay, now our layer up here is still highlighted, the one we're working on that's all blurred, right? Just for grins, let's see what the layer beneath it looks like. And we'll do that by clicking on the eye on this layer that we're working on, and it gets rid of it or we can't see it. Yeah. Now we see the layer beneath it. Let's click the eye again on this layer. Now we see the blur again. Now what we're going to do is we're going to erase over Christina and she'll be sharp because we'll be seeing that layer beneath her. And we'll do that by coming over here to the toolbar and click on the erase tool. Okay, if you bring your um, pen out over Christina, you'll see a little circle. And that actually denotes a brush size. If you come up here to the contextual menu, you'll see a brush. And that's the brush we've decided to use for this. There you go. You can click on it and you'll see the drop down menu of all the different brush sizes uh -huh. and types. If you go over to the right, you see a pixel size for the size of the brush. Right now it's at 20. There's a little slider if you click on it, and you can make the brush a little bit bigger. I wouldn't make it too big, because we still want to have some articulation in the lines there. I'd say right about there is good. Okay, now just bring that over Christina, and press the pen down on the tablet, and just sort of erase right over Christina. Oh, she's getting sharp. Right, so she's sharpening, and the rest of the background surrounding her is blurred. So it's really a cool effect. Yeah. And here's one little tip. All along, we've been using this menu bar up at the top. What a lot of professionals like to do is use the keyboard. And just a little note, if you want to change the size of the brush really quickly, you just click here on the bracket keys. Uh -huh. The bracket key on the left makes the brush smaller. See? If I click the bracket key on the right, it makes it bigger. Yeah. And you can see the corresponding pixel size go up. Okay. Along with the brush size. So go ahead and let's make Christina really sharp. All right. And you can play around with this too. You might want to leave maybe the edges around Christina a little blurred or not, just for effect. Yeah. And see what you like. It's actually really easy. I really like this. That looks great. Let's come up here to the menu bar to file and we'll print it out. Okay, now we have a print preview dialog box. Just yeah. go ahead and click print and we're off to the printer. Okay. If you'd like to learn more about stop action photography or any of the techniques you saw here today, just log on to our website at DIYnetwork.com. And be sure to check out all the pictures we posted on there too. Okay, Wendy, time to check out the final photograph. Oh, great, I've improved. You have, a lot. See how you brought Christina out of the background by sharpening her and leaving yeah. the background blurry? Yes. You feel like you've learned a lot today? Yes, a lot about shutter speed and how to follow the action. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Well, keep up the good work. And remember, always bring your camera with you because the more pictures you take, the better you get. Oh, good. Thank you, it was so much fun working with you today. Well, thank you so much for teaching me. You're welcome. I hope you'll use what you learned today and take your own great stop action photographs. Join me next time on The Whole Picture. Okay, let's check out these. <laughs>